Hey, this is not sir. This is the tier 5 Japanese destroyer Minikaze. It has four 120 millimeter guns, six torpedoes, seven a defense rating, a surface detect of six kilometers, top speed, 41 knots, total health, 10,900. For my modules, reduced crit chance on torpedo tubes and propulsion, faster torpedo aim. For my commander, situation awareness, faster torpedo rearm, and superintendent. We are on the map Trident, and it's been a while since I've been in the Minikaze. And that's partially because it's not as powerful as it once was. It doesn't have access to the 10 kilometer range torpedo. You know, probably 60% of my audience doesn't even know what I'm talking about. That's how long ago it used to have a lot of power, and it just doesn't. The combination of the nerfs that have come to the ship and also the improved skill level of the player base just doesn't allow you to get four, five, six kills in a game relatively. They're just not going to make that same mistake twice. They say, okay, torpedoes, enemies somewhere in the area. We got to be careful. Oh, I'm detected. That means there's a torpedo boat somewhere. I can't be going somewhere that a destroyer could easily ambush me. And I think I've contributed to that myself along with a bunch of online resources. It's just so obvious once you really think about all the mechanics how easy it is to predict the ambush. Now, this enemy Minikaze, he is detected by the friendly destroyer. As you see, he's sort of south of the island. I'm going to send against the Cleveland. I'm just barely in range. I'm in that dead zone where I can hit him, but he cannot see me. And it looks like he's actually going to move away. So this might actually not work out at all. And one of the most frustrating aspects um, the Minikaze is that it only has six torpedoes, two per, and that's really, really hard to use. I mean, I think I have to land at least three torpedoes on the Cleveland to take him out. And just look at this. Are we going to actually get him? How close is this? No. See, this is what I'm talking about. You think, eh, I sent well. It was very accurate. He just moved away slightly. This enemy phoenix appears to be making almost the same exact mistake. And this is sort of a predicted send if he maintains the same course. Now, I don't know if he is. He could find someone and be fearful. And sure enough, yeah, he's pulling back. I have an issue also. I would say that it's fair that players recognize me. I have no problem with that. I have no problem if the enemy goes after me. I can deal with that. I'm not someone who complains about that. Of course, I'm someone who probably is a higher than average skill level, so when people come focusing me down, I realize that I can use that to my advantage. But a Japanese destroyer really works well when he's on a flank with nobody there behind him or around him, and it just is way rarer for me to be in a position like that. I really try to counter whatever the enemy's doing. I'm not just going to commit to a flank and see that 80% of the enemy is not on that flank. So I actually come back towards my teammates and some of them hitch a ride. Now, I don't know if that's because they recognize me, if it's just coincidence, but I always find myself having some support staff behind and that's, that's good in a cruiser and a battleship. That's not really good in a destroyer. In destroyers, you really want to be away from your team, you don't want to give any tells, and it certainly is giving a tell if a battleship like the one right behind me is pushing forward aggressively. I'm going to read that as, okay, either he's a bad player, which is a possibility, probably 10% of the time, or there's a destroyer close by and he feels more comfortable than the average player. So I sent against that battleship and of course, he turned away. I knew it. The second I sent, I was going, uh he, he's dropped off. The smoke has provided him with the perfect opportunity to do that turn. And anytime you're in a position where you feel like, ah, I can't reorient, help. Smoke, islands, those are great tricks to reorient against the enemy's threat. I see, okay. Friendly cruiser, very low, probably gonna die. Yep, probably gonna die. Friendly Congo, overextended. It looks like everyone left him. I would have really liked it if most of the team that ended up going towards the center continued to support the friendlies that were pushing the left flank. 
not the case. And uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if the battleship just happens to be turning and staying in the same area, but he's not making the right choice in the center of the map. He's putting himself out in the open so enemy battleships, enemy destroyers can attack him. So I figure, okay, Congo's going to die. But can I get in position to try and take out a cruiser as he's working his way towards our base? And this is like the typical game where it looks like a loss, right? It looks like the team is scattered. They don't know how to play defensively. They're trying too hard to make plays and overextending and dying. We've lost at least three ships in the enemy territory, 50% halfway point. So yeah, that, that's pretty bad considering we have four total deaths. So that, that's either a player doesn't understand how to play or they're just trying to make plays and you can't you can't make a play you have to be given an opportunity for a play to come to you especially in a destroyer like the minikaze if it's a u.s destroyer and yep uh, the molotov if it's a u.s destroyer maybe a soviet destroyer maybe you could brute force it a little bit but not by much especially low tier so i send against the molotov expecting him to maintain his positioning Enemy Minikaze shows up. I'm going to fire on him. The Molotov, of course, fires on me, and I'm so low in the water. Keep that in mind. The Minikaze is a very short ship. It's very hard to just hit the destroyer. But our torpedoes are still going forward. Is the Molotov not moving? The Molotov... Oh, he's barely alive. He's flooding out. No, he, he put out the flood, of course. Put out the flood, not so, yeah. He put out the flood. He just doused it in water to put the water out. He he fixed the flood, okay? Okay. I'm just used to fires, okay? And uh, that's what I would like to see is a fire. This is dangerous, but again... Oh, of course. Enemy's dead. We did 80%. I'm glad he's dead. Our team is losing the eastern flank, though. So I've got to try and either go after the Minikaze or try and stop the enemy's advance on the eastern flank. But just look how disjointed our team is. We've got a player in the middle of the map, a player on the northeast side of the map who just died. We've got a destroyer that's all the way at I-10. I don't know how he got there. Maybe he was running away from the enemy. We have a battleship that's completely behind our base where a aircraft carrier would go to hide. There's no team coordination. This is a random battle. 100%. And I see on the mini-map, you might not recognize it because I, I wish that uh, the last known position was just slightly different color or something. I really like how it works in World of Tanks. It's like a faded color of the ship or the, the tank. And it works for that game, obviously, but for this game, it, it, not so much, I guess. But we got a cruiser incoming. I can lead him the direction he's trying to head. And see, oh no, it's, it's a battleship. Whoa. Big boy here. It's a US battleship. And I am excited for the opportunity to torpedo him. And I sort of lead him in the direction. He will know I'm here. We don't live in the world where battleships don't take superintendent. And I always laughed at that idea that, oh no, Battleships don't need it. It's one point. And it basically tells you when there's the imminent threat of a torpedo attack. I mean, the New Mexico, especially now, now that we have the ship detectability on the map, you can basically know the exact square that the enemy might be in if you have a reasonable detection range. And you have some sort of sixth sense for the game and oh boy i resent again and i didn't realize that the enemy minikaze is going to be this aggressive i have to pop my smoke because the enemy new mexico is going to engage me and the u.s battleships have a lot of guns and a lot of guns really overwhelm even a destroyer with ap and i'm just trying to kill this guy i set my torpedoes the remaining of course and we're trying to use our guns and we take them out good okay we got an enemy destroyer dead there's still in mexico on this flank friendly new mexico that was hiding behind the island is still basically full life that's pretty impressive he's either got the strongest armor in the game 
or he's the classic battleship captain. I don't even need to highlight what a classic battleship captain is. You all know what the player probably has been doing and probably his goal is to keep every target near his max range because that's a huge advantage for him. Nobody can attack him if he uses his range. Yeah, okay, keep doing that. Not really a good idea to me. And he is, he is in trouble. And I'm going to try and exploit the fact that he's here. Now, what is this battleship doing? He's telling the entire team, I'm here, come and kill me. Even though that's obviously the last thing he wants to do. He plays in a fictional world where nobody attacks and you will be able to hit all your range shots. So I use the fact that all the enemies are going to be converging on his ship to get in position to ambush the Furutaka. It's really low percentage that he's going to recognize that, hey, there could be a destroyer because he's already detected. There's nothing that's telling him I'm in the area and I let his ship. I believe I need to hit at least three torpedoes to kill him because he's basically full life. But look at this could not have worked out better. And we get one, two, three torpedoes exactly take him out. And the friendly battleship did a great job in bringing all the enemies to his position. Enemy Cleveland is coming. I am not going to send against the New Mexico because I feel like he recognizes that there is a destroyer somewhere close by and he's not going to fall for the same trap that I used against the enemy Furutaka. But maybe the Cleveland will. It's 1v5. Solo Warrior is on the table. All we have to do is kill five targets. Easy peasy, right? Yeah, yeah, no. But this Cleveland, he's making the mistake. He's doing the exact same thing. And look at this. We're going to get three torpedoes on him, and we take him out. And we did nearly the exact same attack. We went to the other side of the map, and we attacked a target that probably was not prepared. Now, I'm going to send against the New Mexico. There's probably two enemy ships on our capture point. It's, uh, it, we're in trouble. I'm not detected. They're not detected, though. They've got to be at the edge of the map or the edge of the capture point, even. There's an enemy destroyer there. So I am playing with fire by moving close. And you notice that the enemy New Mexico that I sent has turned back towards the base. So we're probably not going to hit him. We might hit him. I don't think we're going to hit him. And the enemy destroyer popped his smoke. There's no reason to try and kill me. They've already... Oh, that's a pretty low New Mexico. But look at the range. My gun range is, I believe, 7.6 kilometers. My torpedo range is 7. So this is as far as it gets. Unless, of course, I have advanced firing training. And I don't know if that's what you want to do. But I can't even get within range to engage the targets to stop it. Oh, oh, he showed up. Oh, we're going to try. We're going to try, you know. Everyone goes out in glory. Is it going to stop him? Oh, just barely caught him. But now he can engage us, and he's an Ognivo. He's much better at killing me than I am at killing him. And he has a lot of health, too. <laughs> now, if the Ognivo was not alive, I think I have a good chance against the enemy. I really do. But because the Ognivo is alive... Man, that was a good shot by the New Mexico. Because the Ognivo is alive, he just puts a monkey wrench in my plans. Either way, two devastating strikes, three kills, 80,000 points of damage, 1,135 base XP. So it's going to be like 17, 18 if we would have won. Obviously, we were not going to win. And yeah, it's a loss, but it's fun to kill people as they're trying to win. And we could have won the game if we didn't have to run into that destroyer. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.